of that this is going to be an insanely profitable movie and one of the first thing you know early in the movie you have this confident young woman young woman who just says well let's go do it you know and and it's like you know doesn't she say yes she, I, she also says something to the effect of like I'll kill Thanos don't worry about it basically yeah just I, I really love that that's yeah the the I, I didn't feel that there were when I watched Captain Marvel's solo movie I would have I would have loved more like girl power stuff I feel like the Wonder Woman solo movie did better on that although I, I didn't want the Captain Marvel solo movie to be the same as the one we already have the Wonder Woman solo movie but this one had I mean she's not in a ton of the movie but when she's on screen she's just like you know you know what I got this you know just I, I really love her confidence that that everybody you know everybody should have her confidence and you know Nebula says I you know I know where he is and you know the the garden and uh, yeah here's a note about Captain Marvel saying use the stones to undo it and I noted that she's confident some would say arrogant, but it's not as though she's incorrect. You know, she's not saying she can do something that she can't actually do. She can kick, Than kick Thanos' ass. And, yeah, and, and I really appreciate they actually straight up say, where were you, you know, all, all this time? And she's like, there are a lot of other planets. And she's like, they weren't lucky. They... they you know, they, they didn't have you, they weren't that lucky, or something like that, and just, yeah, I love her sass, absolutely love it. And, and, and the, you know, and then Cap says, well, let's get that son of a bitch, and title card, just love that. Let's see, and, let's see, yeah. And and Steve looks at, at Peggy in you know in the compass. I really love that they did that there because it makes sense. As it's it's a logical place for him to. He he's like Thanos might actually kill some. You know he didn't he dusted a bunch of us last time. He might straight up kill and will never come back this time. You know because this is when he thinks that they can bring them back. And so he goes. Yeah, he's he's. He's expecting he might not make it back alive, so he, he looks at the Peggy picture in the compass. You know, that's how he finds his strength, and that, again, you know, places in the memory of the audience. He's, okay, so he still has that, and he looks at it when, you know, when, when things are bad. And so he uses that when, when, you know, when the 2012 Captain America think you know, thinks that it's it's Loki because Loki keeps co you know copying him, which we see in in you know Thor too. But yeah, I mean, it's entirely possible that he was doing it during Avengers One as well, and we just didn't see it. You know, once he's in, once he's when when he's captured, you know, and yeah, that how can you stand this guy? And I I really love the the thing with you know. No, no, it's okay. I, I talked to the secretary. No, 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 Cap. It's okay. Hail Hydra. And then they trust him. and Because you think that the elevator fight is going to, you know, and it's like, oh, man, that's such a great fight. And then they subvert it and, and have this thing. Because, yeah, I mean, that, that is the, the reason that the reason that fight happens at all is because they don't think that he's on Hydra's side. And, and, you know, certainly there are things in, you know, by the, that point in that movie, they're pretty certain that Cap is not on, you know, on Team Hydra. But could he have been recruited and they just hadn't been told yet back then? You know, yeah, I mean, why not? And, and also just the, the, yeah, you know, they were, we, we don't see Frank Grillo until 2014, but makes sense that he was there in 2012 why why wouldn't he and, and same for alexander pierce let's see and 
Yeah, you know, less than a week ago, I watched the 1998 Nick Fury Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. movie, which also has Alexander Pierce. I still prefer this version of Alexander Pierce. Now, let's see. Right. I, I really like, you know, again, they just, they, the MCU, they have the characters behave in logical ways. Not always, not always. But, yeah, Captain Marvel, she's like, I'll do some recon. She flies out and she, and she flies back. And she's like, he's got, there's, there's no army, there's no ships, there's no defenses. It's just him. That's such a great, when I saw the trailers, I didn't even think about that. But it makes perfect sense that she, you know, she can do that. She's incredibly fast. And so, yeah, she, she does that. And, you know, Nebula's like, that's enough. Now, let's see, and, and we see Thanos, and he's, like, farming, and he's got this slight limp in his step, and, you know, and, and that was evidently from using the, the gauntlet a second time, or, actually, I guess it's possible it was that since the first time, anyway, and we see that, you know, his entire left half has been burned via the gauntlet, and I believe, yeah, I, it's, it's more than it was at the end of Infinity War. There it wasn't quite as much. So, yeah, it is every time. And, and at the end of this movie, Professor Hulk's arm is in a sling. So that's also, like, it's a, you know, yeah, it, it does. And, and it killed Tony. And, that's, and I really appreciate that that's, like, there are some deaths in these movies where it's, like, are you sure you couldn't have saved him? I'm, I'm not sure it's necessarily in the MCU, but in movies like this, it's like, did that really kill, you know, X-Men 1. I'm not going to spoil it, but the moment I say, the, you know, X-Men, the, the first X-Men movie, if you've watched it, yeah, there are, you, you know what I'm talking about. There are characters that you're like, shouldn't they be able to walk away from that, though? And... I really, yeah, Infinity Gauntlet, that's not, he's not walking away from that one, there, it's not like just, oh, his heart stopped, but we can't, we don't know how to just start it out, no, he is dead, it just, like, yeah, and they use teamwork to uh, try to get, to try to get the gauntlet, and Thor just straight up, you know, chops the, the hand off, and it's like, you know, and we see the stones are not on the gauntlet anymore. And, you know, they say, you use the stones just, to, yes, but only to destroy them. And, yeah, and, and, and it almost killed me. And, you know, they're like, that can't be true. And, and Nebula says, Thanos is many things, but he is not a liar. But a liar is not one of them. And he's like, thank you, daughter. Maybe I judged you too harshly. That's just... I, I, if they at some point just make, like, a movie that, where, where, like, Thanos, Nebula, Gamora, one of those three, one or more of those three, and just, that's the movie. I, I would watch that. I would, I would watch just the, the, because they're, they're so compelling. And just, and that's when, he, that's when he finally, you know, when, when she says, you should have killed me in Infinity War, he says it would have been a waste of parts. But when she says, he, you know, he's not a liar, you know, finally he is like, just, and, and it's also, I mean, this is, this is a Thanos who he, he won. He did exactly what he, he's, he's been, and he, he retired and they even, you know, I think Rhodes even said, you know, the, the garden is. Oh, he's got a retirement plan, you know, just, yeah. And Thor just straight cuts his head off. And like, what are you doing? I went for the head. And it's, you know, and it's not that he... It's not that Thor actually intellectually believes that that's going to solve anything. But he needs it. It's catharsis. He spent five years. Wait, five years at this point? No, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, he's... 
he's he's no it's not five years at this point sorry he's he's obsessed over that for a while i, I forget do, are we told how long passed between in, excuse me infinity war excuse me and then excuse me the the anyway yeah he's been he's he can't stop thinking about that and so that's what he does and that's also why he's so you know when in, in the five years, yeah, it's not that he actually thinks that he solved anything or that doing that would solve anything. It's just he, yeah. <clears throat> and Thanos, before the head is cut off, said, you know, I am an inevitable, which is very Agent Smith of him. And yeah, and five years later, and we're in New York City, and... We have a director cameo. I'm, I'm afraid I can't. Russo Brothers, I love you. I don't... Whenever I see you, you're, you're both in the same place. It's only, it's like, you have, one of you has a cameo in this, and I don't know if it's the same one or the other one of you has a cameo in Captain America 2 as, as Nick Fury's doctor. I, I don't, I can't tell. I, I don't know. I can't put the first name to the face with, with, these two but yeah you know cameo in the in the support group and did i did i mishear or didn't he say he went on a date and then he says and he cried so it's it's this subtle you know without making a big deal of it you know a gay couple i yeah you know i i i like it and maybe i misheard and he said that he was talking to a couple and one of the people in the couple were was a guy and it was just a straight couple but you know anyway and let's see yeah and and steve talks about loss and he says you know i was i was frozen for seven years. i i you know i met the love of my life and then i was frozen for seven years you, you, know, you have to move on which again you know puts that you know it's people who watch this movie Ideally, you already know that. I'm not. I'm not judging anyone who didn't get around to watching all the movies. It's it's like 21 movies leading up to this one. I'm not judging anybody who didn't watch all of them. But it's it's again. It's it's the primer. Is that what it's called? You know. It just it plays in your head. Ah, oh, right. Steve. He's you know, 70 years. So yeah. And yeah. So so that's all. He he's still using that as the. You know, that's still a really big deal to him, and I'm not saying it should be. And because of that, when he gets the chance, yeah, he chooses to live an entire life with... I, th I thought that was so brilliantly done. that it, Oh yeah, he'll, he'll be jumping around between different times, but to us it looked like just a few seconds, you know. And it was a little... He should maybe have appeared in the same... You know, because they're like, you know, Sam's like, bring him back, you know, and, and all this, I'm trying, you should come back, it's just, you know, but I get, you know, it's, it's for dramatic effect that, and I, I think they also did, I don't know if it was makeup or CG they used, but his aging, I, I thought it was, you know, I didn't feel like it was ex excessive, a lot of age makeup is, yeah. Let's see, and the, yeah, we see the quantum tunneling car, and it's in storage, and Ant-Man gets out. Did I, did I get this right? It's because they, someone needed to press that button up on the, the windshield, and like, was it a, was it a rat or a cat or something, walked across and activated it, and then it, if, yeah, I, I mean, that's, I could see how years could pass without that exact thing happening, and yeah, and you know Scott walks around and is like, you know what what happened? And he asks that kid, well, kid, what happened? And the kid just turns around, and he turns and he rides away. You know, ugly pants, hands in pocket, and and there's this huge place and it's just you know the, the vanished and all the names are on these stones alphabetically and you know scott is like no please cassie no and then he finds his own name on there 
and yeah, so because the people who, you know, he wasn't dusted, but the people who knew that he wasn't, yeah, the, the, he wasn't, what's the, you know, the only people who could tell you that he hadn't been dusted had been dusted themselves, so, yeah, and, you know, he, he, I forget if he knocks the door, you know, presses the, the bell or whatever, but, you know, Cassie, five years older than last time, you know, and, yeah, and, and now, you know, she's being, because it's been five years since she, she thought he was dusted, you know, she didn't think she would ever see him again, and that's, this is, this is a movie that really, you know, that's, that's another thing, maybe, like, the, the, the Russo brothers, they go straight for the heart, and they're really trying to get you to cry. Again, I, I am adamant not to cry at a movie theater. I am adamant not to cry, you know, if, like, I guess if I, if I did cry in a movie theater, I would, I would wait longer before recording the video. I just, I don't, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with crying. It's very healthy. I don't want to be on camera you know, either crying or having recently cried, and I don't, and I don't want to cry in a movie theater and have to walk past complete strangers without being able to hide that I cried. But this movie really tested that. That, this was, this was, and, and there's like maybe five separate times in the movie where it's like, okay, now cry. Just the, it's, it's like, it's like they're, they're, the, the, like uh, like uh, ratatouille, I guess, and they're just they're they're standing there on top of your head, and they're they're pulling the hair, and it's like okay now cry, and I feel, oh, crap I didn't I didn't write down who said I maybe Captain Marvel, I'm I'm not entirely yeah yeah right yeah this you know five years have passed and we see Black Widow sitting there talking to the the different you know and yeah and and Rocket is like. Hey, wh wh what what are you what are you doing? Do you need him to get another haircut or something? And hey, looks to me like she got them all cut. But anyway, and he's and she's like, "Yo, fur face. What happened on Earth happened on a lot of planets, you know." And I I really yeah. And the the you know, Rhodey brings up there's you know oh there's this there's these gangs and it looks like they didn't even get you know a shot off and and Natasha I think she already knows that what she's saying she's she's she knows that what she's saying is not what it actually is she just doesn't want to accept the reality she's like oh like the the dusting and he's like no this, it looks like it was Barton's work and he's like you know oh the the you know so, you know, evidently he's been killing, you know, organized crime figures and leaving these real brutal, bloody... It's, it's good that he only tells us because that would lose the PG-13 rating if... And, yeah, you know, he... So, so War Machine goes on looking for, for Barton and I, I really... I love what, how they... they the, the whole thing with Barton in this movie, it was so devastating to see the family literally disappear so you know not not literally in front of his eyes but so close to him they, they were right there just seconds before and just I mean I've seen him be bad I've seen Jeremy Renner be badass in a lot of movies I, I'm not entirely sure I've seen a movie where he wasn't at all badass I didn't watch Tag I don't know if that one but but you know he was he was in SWAT he's in the the 28 weeks later which I, I intend to do a video on it at some point. And the, the MCU, he's just, he's such a badass. This is, this is the most badass I've, I've seen him. And we have yet another scene of Steve caring about his girls. Steve, mom at the ready, Rogers, you know, he's, he comes in and he 
he talks to to Nat and just I I find that like joke meme whatever incredibly funny, but it is also really really heartwarming to to see him, you know, helping the you know now it's it's been Black Widow in two movies and Scarlet Witch in in one. Scarlet Witch in Civil War and Black Widow in this and in Winter Soldier. I was about to say it's it's something like it's something with war in the title, right? Because that's anyway. Like literally, the the Russos. Let's see, they've done two Avengers movies and two Captain America movies. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess only two of those movies are called something with war in it, but yeah. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate that the movie actually spends a while without particularly having action scenes. It, it basically, I guess, the action scenes is only once they start jumping back through time. Then, then there's action scenes. You know, the, where Infinity War had a ton of action, the, the, yeah, I really, I'm, I get people's frustration with it being... The fact that they made two movies at the same time made it, you know, we knew that when the, the ending happened that, okay, they're not going to remain dust, you know, because there's another Avengers movie coming out and Spider-Man and Black Panther are definitely getting sequels, so yeah. But the, the yeah, let's see, the, the I, th I think it's really smart to do, I mean, it's not that... Infinity War doesn't also have emotional moments, and it's not that Endgame has no action until the the climax, which is of course bigger than. I don't think there's ever been a an action scene as big as the climax of this movie, and that's that is quite impressive. That that is amazing. But the the yeah the the yeah you know it's not it's not that but. Infinity War focused especially on a lot of really huge action where also like all this teamwork and such you know Avengers and Guardians and such but the the this uh, let's see come to think of it Black Panther Black Panther and Doctor Strange never officially became Avengers members they are in the comics some of them time yeah, anyway, the, the although I guess Doctor Strange technically in the third, cer certainly Peter Parker is made an Avenger. Anyway, the, the, yeah, the, the, it's not that this one doesn't have action and it's not that Infinity War doesn't have emotional moments, but they clearly did focus on, you know, big, emo big, big action in Infinity War and more character exploration in Endgame and, Excuse me. That that is definitely something, and I understand the the you know some people were excuse me frustrated that for example Captain America does not have a lot of screen time in Infinity War and does not have a lot of character exploration. It's it's you know we see him fight in action scenes and like he has a couple of really meaningful lines, but then this one does really have character exploration. So yeah. Anyway, the the yeah, and Ant Man arrives at the facility and. Let's see. Right, yeah, to, to Scott, the five years were more like five hours because he was in the quantum realm. That is a really, really smart way to, to do that. And, you know, I, I remember there, there were people who were like, you know, why, why would the big, you know, the, the big tension moment of the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp be how will Scott get back you know, out of the quantum realm, when that was something he did easily in the first. Well, in the first, he had the, I, I forget, does it have a name? The, the blue disc, you know, that, that makes things bigger. In, in the second movie, he doesn't appear to have one of those on him. And, yeah, just, you know, it, and, and Janet wasn't able to, to get out of there for, for all those years, so... But she did age, so to her it clearly wasn't just hours. To her it must have been years. Huh. 
I get, well, maybe they're, I mean, it's the quantum realm. It's, it's not like, you know, maybe different parts of the quantum realm affect, you know, time differently. It's, you know, and, you know, it's like, are you saying that, you know, quantum time travel? No, 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 I'm saying, yes, I'm saying time, time travel. And, you know, who do we talk to about this? And, you know, of course, Tony, and he's got this little kid, and the kid is called Morgan, which means that the incredibly vivid dream that Tony had in Infinity War, he was seeing one possible reality, or he was seeing the future, one of, one of those things. Possibly both of those things, and that really, I they did a they did such a good job, and that's why I'm really glad. I watched I rewatched Infinity War like day before yesterday, so it was incredible. They they have that entire conversation about he thought it was an incredibly vivid dream, and he thought she might be pregnant, and she says she's not, which I really don't want to like mansplain pregnancy stuff. Does that mean that she checked? I mean, did she did she pee on a stick since last? Like, as is, why doesn't she just say I don't think so? Not as far as I know, or something, or at least she's not very pregnant yet. I I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, the the kid was maybe like four years old, so it makes sense that they had the kid in the five years, you know. So, but but that was and and he's so great with her. It's it's man. And then she ends up without a father. Man. Just the Russos, yeah. See, if if one were the conspiratorial sort, which I'm not, but let's... One might suspect that the Russos do in fact want everyone to cry, perhaps so that causing another great flood but again that's ridiculous I'm sorry that's a terrible joke anyway but but yeah and I noted that you know Tony dreamt this and Tony explains why they can't time travel and then you know he spends a bunch of hours testing and he's like you know what this is not gonna work and just and when he turns away he's like nope uh, sir come, come back it works the, the last model you made works, and yeah, it's, and they they had to, they make Back to the Future reference, and, and Scott completely, I, I really love Scott, and I'm glad he got so much time, you know, Scott and Barton were not in Avengers 3, I think that they make up for that here, and really, I mean, did they need to be, because cer certainly if Ant-Man was in the third movie, there's there's stuff that wouldn't really no I I think it's perfect that we have the entirety of Ant Man and the Wasp set during Infinity War, and you know ending with the ready you know quantum tunnel and yeah and anyway the the let's see so so yeah the Scott Lang with a straight face he's like it's okay we need the there you know. Doing time travel, there are rules. You don't talk to your past self. You don't bet on sporting events. And and I, I forget if it's Rhodey or Tony or who. Are you seriously, did you, are you saying that everything you know about time travel you learned from Back to the Future or some, something like that, you know? That was, that was so good. And it's like you had to. And, and really, when you think about it, over the course of the film, the villain that they're trying, you know, the, yeah, the, the villain realizes that time travel is going on and he hijacks the time travel and becomes a huge threat. That, oh, should I say, you know what, um, I, I, technically, is that a spoiler? I mean, it's kind of, the movie is old. Not old, but old. it's not new. It's almost as old as me. I'm 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 gonna land it, let it hang. And the people who know, yeah, some people are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about, and some people 
might not. And some of the people who might not, it's because they haven't watched that movie. I, I, I'm not going to give that movie away. I will say that I'm glad that I did watch that movie so recently. Because that does... And that's the thing, I mean... There's no way that, the, that Kevin Feige and the Russo brothers, when making this, didn't think... That, didn't, didn't realize that that was basically what they were doing. They, yeah, they, they love this classic movie, and they're like... Let's throw superheroes in there, because they've done that a couple of other times. You know, the... the again, I can't, I can't give examples without giving away the other movies, but let's just say that the Winter Soldier, Captain America the Winter Soldier, the movie, is they took a classic movie and they added superheroes to the, the concept, and yeah, absolutely, absolutely love it. And let's see... Huh. Does that say Steve? Steve says something like, we lost, and you won't even, and then Tony, I think, responds, yeah, I won't even. You're right, I won't even. And, let's see. And someone says, I lost twice. I'm afraid I didn't. Yeah. And we have Professor Hulk. I, I really love that. And the, the... That was so good. Just the, you know, well, we have to talk to someone who has a big brain. Bigger than, bigger than that. Yeah, that's what they say, isn't it? Bigger brain than that guy. And then smash cut, and they're like, what, what is, you know, and, and then cut again, and it's Professor Hulk, and just, it's such a good job. I'm really glad that, he, I read that this is the last time Mark Ruffalo is going to play Hulk. I, that sucks. And I really, I I'm, I'm, I don't know if I want someone else to take over really soon, so we can get more Hulk, more Professor Hulk, or if I'm like, let's 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 take some time where we don't have a Hulk to to honor the memory. But it just, it's so good. And they, they you know, the cut, and he's like sitting there in the back of the the this big car, and the just, and and it's like sitting there explaining, and and a couple of the teenagers come up like. Can we get a selfie with you? Of course you can. It's like, hey, can 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 you take it? And and then Ant Man's like, hey, um, do you wanna you wanna selfie with with Ant Man? And they're like, um, and and then and and Banner, he's such a nice guy, so he tries to like say, and come on, it's Ant Man. Do you want a selfie with Ant Man? And Ant Man's like, look, I'm sorry, I no, no, they clearly don't. Want, just, it's okay, it's okay, you know. And instead of cheese, they say green. And, and, and he says, listen to your mother, she knows better. <laughs> this, this, uh, he's so, he's so happy to be Hulk. And he's so happy to be like a role model. And to be, this is, this is the guy, when we first met Mark Ruffalo's banner, he was like, you know, he was in like India or something. And he, you know, runs and, and like, like military guys driving a jeep across the street and he's like covers and then he's like you know the the shield you know officer you know shield people on the on the helicarrier later and he's like turns away and you know and now he's like oh hey come sure we can do a selfie and and make sure you listen to your mother he's he's so happy to be a role model and and to be the and these the, these kids yeah did the voice change slightly for Friday? I, I don't know. And, you know, Tony figures out time travel. And, and he's like, shit. And then he's like, shit. We don't say that word. That's, that's mommy's word. She made up, she invent, she came up with that word. And we don't say it. And it's like, you know, yeah, seriously, kid. If, if you keep saying that, the MPA will not let them get away with a PG-13. And that's such man that, oh, he taught a four-year-old to say the S word. That's so messed up. And very, very Tony. And, yeah, I wrote that he's great with his daughter. I, I really, the, the thing with, like, you know, he's like, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, I think she's like, are you thinking of something? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of something. 
is it uh, popsicles? And like, yeah, you know, it's about that's man. He says that's manipulative, just like he said to Harley. I watched Iron Man three just yesterday. That's uh, yeah, wow. And and like you know, the, tell me a story. Well, and he calls her some. I, I forget exactly what he calls. Let's you know. This one night, Morgan went to bed and fell asleep. That's a terrible story. <laughs> And, and like, and, and yeah, and she says, I love you 3,000. And then when he talks to Pepper, he's like, and she said that you're like somewhere between 600 and 900. So she, she loves me more. And, and do, doesn't he, yeah, he says, I love you 3,000 on the, on the recording. And let's see. I wrote, help everyone, question mark. So I guess that's a line. I'm sorry, I don't remember it. There's a ton of stuff in this movie. It's going to take at least one more viewing before everything's... But it's... I, I don't think I'm going to watch it again incredibly soon. I, I watch almost no movie more than once in, in theaters. But I'm definitely... I'm, I'm, you know, in like half a year when the library gets the DVD, I'll, I'll watch it again for sure. And... Yeah, and, and the... You know, Pepper says, you know, I can't get you to, I, I can't stop you. One of my great, one of the great failures of my life has been my inability to stop Tony Stark. And, and they're also, I'm, I'm really glad that we got more time with, with Tony and, and Pepper together because they're so good together. And this is, and, and this, they've been, not together, but they've been on, you know, they've, they've had on-screen relationship since 2008, you know, and now they have a daughter, and I, I'm really glad. I, again, when I watched the first movie, I was like, I hope they get together someday. I had no idea that it would be this compelling, that, that just... Yeah, Kevin Feige and the Russo brothers, it's just, it's, it's like... I mean, I'm not going to say that nothing, that, that absolutely everything is perfect. Although I'm not sure I can really... I'll, I'll see if I think of, of, of any example of something that's not perfect. But man, are they good at this. Man. An unreal. And yeah, and, and they try to you know do time travel with, with Scott and... The, you know, he becomes like, I don't know, teenager, maybe, Scott, and like, baby, and like, really old. <laughs> and he comes back as himself, and he's like, somebody peed in my pants. I don't know if it was baby me, or old me, or just me, me. That's really funny. <laughs> wow. Somebody get that man some orange slices. And, 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 you know, Tony drives incredibly fast and lunge, you know, he turned into a baby, didn't he? <laughs> and he's got the time-space GPS and, uh, let's see. And then I wrote, keep new, have to. I, I don't know what that means anymore. And Tony gives him the shield back. And he's like, no, he... And, and that's such a perfect... Like, the last time that they talked about that shield, Tony said, my father made that shield. You don't deserve it. Give it back. And Cap did. And now he gives it back and says he would want you to have it. Or he, w sorry, he wanted you to have it. He actually did make the decision back then. So, And then he's like, but don't tell anyone I didn't bring shields for everybody. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. Yeah, and Hulk is in the back of the truck and they go to New Asgard, which, do they ever actually say, but, you know, it's, it's in Norway. And, I, yeah, that's a great, and it's, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, Thor Ragnarok, you know, 
Odin said, he's staying there in Norway, and he's like, this could be home. And, you know, at the end of, excuse me, at the end of the movie, he's like, let's go to Earth. And so, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And, yeah, Valkyrie has, you know, she's, yeah, she has a regular job now. And it's just, and, if, yeah. The, the, and, and it's like, you know, he, do, he doesn't talk to anybody. He only comes, we only see him once a month when he gets supplies and we see all the beer. Yeah. That bad, huh? And, and we see that he's gotten kind of fat and he's got really long beard and long hair. I'm, I'm not fat shaming. I'm just saying that it's, it's not what we, we don't expect Thor to, to, you know, look like that, and, and he's like, oh, does he call him rabbit? I forget, but, you know, he ran and, like, hugs him up against the, the belly, and he's like, that's, that's really not necessary. That's... And, and Cor Meek and Cork are sitting there on the couch, and, and Cork is, like, playing a video game, and he's like, Thor, he's back, and it's like, because, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's been forced into me, he, he was a, a gladiator warrior for a while, but he was forced into that. He didn't want to be. He just he wanted to start this revolution against the Grand Master. And yeah, now now that he doesn't have to be a big tough guy, you know, yeah, he's he's got this really soft voice. And and said, and Thor walks up and he's like, what was it like, Noob Killer sixty nine or something? And he's like, I'm gonna if you don't if you don't log off, I'm gonna. I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna hammer what was it the joystick or something up your butt Yeah, that's right. Go cry to daddy Let me know if he, he does it again, you know it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, Thor is better than one of those mods that Go around banning jerk players. That's that's so good Yeah <laughs> I'm sorry that's really, really funny. That's, that's, and, and you gotta have something that just down to earth and relatable in the middle of this, you know, it is, this is a story that, that spans, I guess, over 70 years because the, the end part with, with Steve, that's gotta be in like the forties or something because it's, you know, Peggy is all young there. So, and that's also some, I mean, at the end of the day, if he like, I mean, he maybe had to stage it or something, but him showing up isn't like this, but, but you're dead. No, she's, she would be like, but I thought, you know, you went missing there. And if he pretended that he was discovered again, maybe, maybe he talked Stark Sr., maybe he talked Howard and, you know, he met Howard and he was like, I'm back. I can't explain why. Please don't ask. I'm gonna go talk to Peggy. Can you make it seem as though you found me in the ice? And so, you know, something like that. But yeah, she wouldn't be like, it, it would be different if like, let's see, what would be an example? Let's say that, that, the, that they traveled to 2014 and brought back Gamora and, you know, one of the, yeah, and, and then pretended that, uh, no, no, she was just, you know, no, she, she died on Warmere, there's no way, you know. And I, I like that too, that there at the end, you know, she went through the time portal with, the, with, with Thanos and the others, so the, the yeah, or, yeah, anyway, she, she was in the same time period. So, which, yeah, I guess Guardians 3 is going to, at least in part, be the, the Guardians now with Thor trying to track down Gamora somewhere in, in the galaxy. I mean, that, I'd watch the hell out of that, so, yeah. And I'm, I'm really, really glad that it, you know, I maintain it was a mistake to ever fire James Gunn. But I'm glad that they brought him back and that they didn't like, say, no, 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 let's have someone else come in. Let's do a completely different script or something. No, it's, you know, 
So it's gonna, it's been delayed, but it's gonna be the movie that he wanted to make back then. That's, uh, yeah. And I, I think he'll make a better Suicide Squad movie than David Ayer. And I say that as a huge fan of David Ayer. Street Kings is one of my all-time favorite movies. But the, I, I don't think he was, I don't think that it's that he can't do a good superhero or supervillain movie. I just think it needs to be characters that are already very specifically LA gang environment instead of taking these much more colorful characters and trying to fit them into that aesthetic. I, I don't think that, yeah, anyway. And, you know, Thor is incredibly happy and cheery right up until the moment that Professor Hulk says the word Thanos. And, you know, Korg is like, yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't say that word. Sorry, I, I cannot do a New Zealand accent. And the, the, and, and Banner, almost instantly, he's like, that guy, he doesn't say Thanos again. He just says that guy because that's what he used to call Hulk, the other guy, and yeah. So so he's he's completely ready to, to yeah. And Rocket's like you know we got beer on the ship, what kind? And yeah. I have to say I really love that. Like for a, for a chunk of this movie, it looks like the rest of it is going to be the Avengers jumping through time, getting all the stones, and then the movie's gonna end with them, you know, they're gonna make the makeshift gauntlet, and of course, Tony's the one who figures out, and, you know, snap, everyone brings back. But then it adds the twist that when there's two nebulas in the same time, the, you know, 2014 nebula can pick up what 2022 nebula has recorded in her memory files, or, yeah, can, can pick up some of it, and they get that nebula, they, swap them out and the climax has Thanos travel back you know he travels back through time and he shows up and he brings the the huge army he brings all his generals and you know all the and and their spaceships and all this or is it just the one warship and anyway and and then you know the Avengers for a little bit it looks like well how, how the what are they gonna do you know and then in come all the the yeah all the other Avengers members, and that is, the, you know, the climax, it feels like a huge, you know, climax to, like, it's been ages since I read them myself. Are, are they called event comics or comic events or something like that, you know, where it was just this huge sprawling with all these different characters that just, yeah. And, you know, in, in general, Infinity War also felt like one of those. There's, there's literally never going to be a... Okay, maybe not literally never, but it's going to be a really long time before there's going to be a bigger, more intricate, more, you know, more packed with named characters who all have powers of their own climb, you know, action scene than the climax of this movie is in there. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's, you know, every, every single movie that, you know, yeah, every, every movie that comes after this, you know, I hope they remember you, just the, the there's, the, you're going to have to work incredibly hard to, to top that. And I like that when we see Ronan, we, we see it from the, the POV of some of, you know, yeah, some of the bad guys, some of these criminals. It, it's a lot like in you know Batman Begins when you see Batman taking on the the <clears throat> excuse me I'm not spoiling I'm just saying that at one point in that movie there's a scene shot from the perspective of the the criminals where you see Batman taking them down that that was really really awesome and you know and and Ronan basically kills the criminals who didn't become dust and you know one of, one of them says you know you you're crazy and you know what was it I'll, I'll give you anything and he says you can't give me what I want and yeah he, he cuts the the throat of one of them and he's like bleeding out he's like help me I'll give you anything 
and he straight up executes him. He, you know, he stabs him with the, with the sword and, you know, Nat is behind him and, you know, asks him to, to come back with, yeah. And the, yeah, I wrote here that it explores all the major characters and it's, yeah, it's, it's the first Avengers movie that actually, yeah, Avengers 2 also has a lot of exploration for for the main Avengers members, but it doesn't, yeah, it's, it's not quite as deep, and some of that is ultimately franchise building. The, the stuff with Thor is franchise building, you know, it, it sets up. Infinity War, basically. It sets up the, the Infinity Gems that he didn't already know about. And there's the... Yeah, but, but this one... Yeah, they, they... Avengers 2 still does a really great job, but this one digs even deeper. And, right, and, and he tells Nat, you know, don't, don't give... You know, don't, don't give me hope. Yeah, so, so don't. Don't what? Don't give hope. And and Rhodes actually says, you know, if we can travel through time, why don't we just find baby Thanos? And, you know, he, like, mimics, like, strangling... And, and it's like, I mean... Again, you had to. Someone had to bring up the, the kill baby Hitler argument, you know. And and then they start talking about all the, the time travel movies they were, you know. That's where they, they get the ideas, and he... Let, Rails off a bunch, and then Scott Lang says, "Die Hard." No, wait, that's not one. Wow, that. I think there's some chance that the the quantum realm may have messed a little bit with his head. He didn't used to be quite this stupid. He can't possibly think that Die Hard is a time travel movie. There's just yeah. I also like the thing with oh man, I'm so hungry. Can I have you know? And grabs the peanut butter sandwich and the and and it's like. Is that five hours of hunger or five years of hunger? But and the yeah, I also quite like that. It's in, it, I forget exactly what it was Nat said, but she says something like, "Don't, don't, if, don't tell me we can just handle this or something, or I'm gonna, or you're gonna get a peanut butter sandwich and you know thrown at you or something like that." And you know they have to test the time travel, and Clint volunteers and. You know, Barton is back, and the the and he hears, you know, he he and he gets pulled back just before he gets to you know see his daughter, and she's like, "Yes, Dad, where are you?" And she just leaves it. It's, yeah, and he's like, "It it worked." And I really love the Avengers theme plays over the stone brainstorm sequence and it's you know the the Avengers 3 really kind of it, it uses the Avengers theme music when the excuse me when the the the, the excuse me when the secret Avengers help Vision and Wanda when they arrive at Wakanda and I feel like there's one more that I can't completely place right now. Maybe also when, you know, the climax, when they fight. I th yeah, I think, I think if, if it played more than this one time in this movie, then I didn't notice it, but I thought it was a really, really great use because that is like, yeah, here we go. We're, we're solving the problem. They're getting into the, and I like, the, you know, I think it's Tony who calls Thor Big Lebowski and yeah, and Thor explains the stones and he gets into this like, He's he's like rambling about the and, and you know you know maybe no no, no I'm, I'm I'll, I'll it's just yeah and and they call the and I think maybe also Tony calls Professor Hulk Jolly Green as in Jolly Green Giant and let's see and yeah they get out we get one trip each no do overs and let's see. Ah, crap. I wrote more than once on this. 
Yeah, I can't completely tell, but it something about travel. And I wrote, yeah, and then we get to New York 2012. I like that they, I think they did a good job of using clips from the, the film to set up, you know, where are we, when are we, in, in the different films, and then also had completely new footage for the, yeah, because if, I think for Thor and 2014, at first we don't see the footage from the other movies. We just see new footage made specifically for this, you know, where we see Thanos, Gamora, and Nebula. And, you know, Thanos is like talking, ugh, Roman, he's completely obsessed, isn't he? You know, really, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, I guess it's about time to eat. And this is a perfectly decent time to stop recording for now. I'm more than halfway through the first notepad. And we've been recording for an hour.